NASA's newly built $839 million experimental aircraft will fly faster than the speed of sound without creating a sonic boom. But the question is, why and how? Supersonic aircraft, aka those that fly faster than the speed of sound, have existed for decades. On October 14, 1947, the Bell X-1, piloted by Major Chuck Yeager, reached a speed of Mach 1.06, or 1,127 kilometers per hour, making it the first aircraft to break the sound barrier. Over the following years, new aircraft kept pushing the speed record, and by 1965, the Lockheed YF-12A was cruising at over Mach 3.2, or 3,300 kilometers per hour. At this speed, it would only take 1 hour and 40 minutes to travel between New York and London. Meanwhile, in Great Britain, the first supersonic commercial aircraft was beginning development. In 1954, Arnold Hall, director of the Royal Aircraft Establishment, asked aeronautical engineer Morian Morgan to form a committee to study the concept. Over the following years, research was conducted, reports were published, and eventually, in 1962, the UK and France signed a treaty for the joint design and production of a supersonic airliner. Over the next seven years, the aircraft was designed and built, and finally, on March 2, 1969, the jet, named Concorde, flew for the first time. Over the following decades, the Concorde, along with its short-lasting Soviet counterpart, the Tupolev Tu-144, transported more than 2.5 million passengers around the world, at speeds of up to Mach 2.04, or 2,180 kilometers per hour. However, the aircraft had numerous issues. First of all, it was wildly inefficient. The Concorde burned fuel around five times as fast as modern airliners, while carrying less than half the passengers. This rapid fuel consumption, combined with greater nitrogen oxide emissions at high altitudes, made it terrible for the environment. It also gave it a very limited range and made it incredibly expensive to operate, which resulted in extremely high ticket prices. But maybe most importantly, whenever the aircraft went supersonic, it would generate a noise-rattling sonic boom at 110 decibels, similar to the sound of a jackhammer or power saw. This sonic boom would propagate down to the ground, causing minor property damage and a disruptive experience for civilians. As a result, in 1973, the US Federal Aviation Administration banned civilian supersonic flights over land restricting the Concorde to transatlantic flights only. Because of all these issues, by the 1990s, the practicality of the Concorde was being called into question. Then, on July 25, 2000, Air France Flight 4590, a Concorde flying from Paris to New York, crashed upon takeoff, killing 113 people and injuring six others. This tragedy served as the nail in the coffin for Concorde, and just over three years later, on November 26, 2003, the iconic aircraft made its final flight, marking the end of supersonic passenger transport. However, just over a decade later, in the company's Spike Aerospace and Boom Supersonic emerged, promising a new generation of supersonic passenger aircraft with more efficient turbofan engines, enhanced aerodynamics, advanced composite materials, and the use of sustainable fuels. However, one major roadblock remained. Sound. No matter how much better these new aircraft are, supersonic civilian transport is still banned over land in the US, restricting any future aircraft to primarily over water routes. And in order to change this, it must be proven that supersonic jets can fly without producing loud, disruptive sonic booms. However, this is an expensive and time-consuming process, something no new startup can afford to tackle. As a result, in order to advance aerospace technology and open the way for private companies, in 2016, NASA announced its Low Boom Flight Demonstrator program, with the goal of creating a quiet supersonic aircraft to help retract bands 
on supersonic passenger transport. In February 2016, Lockheed Martin was awarded a preliminary design contract, and by June 2017, a preliminary design review was held. Then, on April 2, 2018, NASA awarded Lockheed Martin Skunk Works a $247.5 million contract to design, build, and deliver the Low Boom X plane. Finally, on June 26, 2018, the US Air Force designated the project as X 59 Quest, standing for Quiet Supersonic Technology, making it the first supersonic X plane in over a decade. Before we continue, let me introduce this video sponsor, Storyblocks, which I actually used to make this video and have been using to create futurology content for years. Storyblocks is a stock media subscription service offering a vast library of high quality video, images, music, sound effects, video templates, and more. Everything you need to craft up a compelling video. And the best part, it's all for one set price. You get an unlimited, and I mean unlimited number of downloads, and it's all royalty free, meaning you don't have to worry about copyright issues. And even better, Storyblocks is constantly refreshing their library with new high quality media based on customer demand. So if you want to stay ahead of the game and produce outstanding content at an affordable price, look no further than Storyblocks. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head to storyblocks.com slash futurology or click the link in the description. Thank you, Storyblocks. And now back to the video. The X-59 features a long, very distinctive airframe that is optimized for supersonic flight. Typically, when an aircraft flies supersonic, its shockwaves produce a pressure signature that quickly coalesce into an N-shaped wave. This then propagates down to the ground, where it results in a sharp, loud sonic boom. The unique shape of the X-59 tailors its volume and lift distribution to alter this pressure signature, preventing it from coalescing and resulting in a significantly quieter sound at the ground. So what we're trying to do is spread out that pressure change, essentially. And so uh, what we have to do is contour the, the change of pressure uh, across the vehicle. And we do that by shaping so that we don't have a bunch of uh, little shocks that are different strengths that will all either move forward or move back and end up with, you know, one large pressure change in the front, one large pressure change in the back. We're gonna blend it out a little bit. And so that's why we have that long nose is to give us more time to get the, get the pressure uh, variation, you know, ramped up. Due to this special design, it is expected that the X-59 will produce a low 75 decibel effective perceived noise level thump equivalent to that of a car door slamming, compared to the 110 decibel sonic boom of the Concorde. However, this distinctive shape provides a significant design challenge. Due to the aircraft's long pointy nose, which spans more than one third of its total length, it is inherently nose heavy. As a result, the designers at Skunk Works needed a way to push as much weight back as possible. Their solution, a mixed metal and composite airframe with the more heavy and thermally resistant metals near the tail, engine, and in the substructures, and the lighter weight carbon fiber reinforced composite materials in the nose, wing skins, and control surfaces. Another challenge for the X-59 designers was ensuring adequate stability and control at both low subsonic speeds and at its supersonic design point. As a result, flaps are included for increased lift during takeoff and landing, and ailerons for roll control. A stabilator was added for pitch control, and a vertical stabilizer with a rudder for yaw control. In addition, a small T-tail was added to manipulate the aircraft's shock signature, along with a fixed canard for pitch stability at the supersonic design point. In addition to its unique structure and controls, the X-59 must produce adequate thrust to accelerate to supersonic speeds. To achieve this, it is equipped with a General Electric F414 afterburning turbofan engine. This engine is 12.8 feet long and has a 35-inch diameter, 
consisting of a 10-stage axial compressor, a combustor, a two-stage turbine, and an afterburner, producing 13,000 pounds of thrust at normal operation, and up to 22,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner activated. This high power propulsion enables the X-59 to reach a max speed of Mach 1.5, or 990 miles per hour, with a cruise speed of Mach 1.42 at an altitude of 55,000 feet. In addition, the engine's top-mounted placement prevents its shockwaves from reaching the ground and allows the aircraft's underside to be smooth, which helps prevent shockwaves from coalescing. Another unique design feature of the X-59 is its reusability of parts from other aircraft. To save money, the landing gear is from a General Dynamics F-16, its cockpit, ejection seat, and canopy are from a Northrop T-38, the control stick is from a Lockheed F-117, and part of its propulsion system is from a Lockheed U-2. However, one major new design feature had to be implemented. Due to the aircraft's pointy nose, the pilot has no direct front visibility. To solve this problem, the aircraft is equipped with NASA's External Vision System, which is a top-mounted, ultra-high-definition 4K camera, as well as the Forward Vision System, a bottom-mounted, retractable array of cameras that provide both visible, shortwave, and longwave infrared vision. Together, these systems are connected to advanced avionics equipment in the cockpit, which, along with the glass canopy, will provide the pilot with a complete field of vision. Altogether, the X-59 will be 99.7 feet long, about the length of a basketball court, with a 29.7 foot wingspan and a height of only 14 feet, with a maximum takeoff weight of 24,300 pounds. Between design, construction, and flight tests, the project will cost a total of $839 million. Since work began in April 2018, the X-59 program has advanced significantly. In October 2018, NASA Langley Research Center in Virginia began testing an 8% scale model of the X-59 in its 12-foot low-speed wind tunnel at high angles of attack to test static stability and control, dynamic forced oscillations, and laser flow visualization. And a month later in November 2018, NASA began performing low-boom flight tests over Galveston, Texas. To do this, an F-A-18 Hornet would climb to 50,000 feet before diving and briefly going supersonic, producing a low-amplitude sonic boom. This boom was created between four to eight times a day for nine days over a two-week period and was monitored by 15 noise sensors and over 500 residents, gathering community data on sonic booms and helping prepare for the X-59's future flight tests. Meanwhile, in Palmdale, California, Lockheed Martin began machining the X-59's first parts. And only six months later, in May 2019, these first parts began being loaded into the tooling assembly. By June, assembly was underway, and in August 2019, NASA Glenn Research Center in Ohio performed tests in its 8x6 supersonic wind tunnel. In 2020, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, assembly of the X-59 continued, and by December 2020, construction was halfway completed. Over the following year, assembly continued, and in November 2021, the X-59 was removed from its jig system to begin final assembly, including the first power run of its internal systems. Then, in December 2021, it was shipped to Fort Worth, Texas to undergo structural testing and calibration of its fuel systems. While this was underway, an 11.5% scale model of the X-59 was tested in Skunk Works' subsonic wind tunnel to gather data for the aircraft's flight control system. And by April 2022, the X-59 was returned to Skunk Works in California to begin final systems integration. Throughout 2022 and early 2023, the X-59 was fitted with all of its internal systems, and in March 2023, 
the tail structure was installed, allowing the aircraft to be towed out onto the flight line for ground tests. Over the following months, tests continued, and in November 2023, the X-59 was relocated to the Skunk Works paint barn, where it received its patriotic color scheme. Finally, on January 12th, 2024, the X-59 was unveiled to the public during a ceremony. In early 2024, tests continued and the ejection seat was installed and passed inspection. Then, on October 30th, 2024, the X-59 started its engine for the first time. So we just, a few weeks ago, had our first engine run. And uh, so we have some testing of the engine itself, which seems to uh, run very well. Uh, and then all of the systems. And so we're, we're kind of methodically going through checkouts of, of all of the various systems. And then after that, after we have the airplane systems uh, working together, then we'll do uh, uh, electromagnetic interference testing to make sure that you know, the systems aren't interfering with themselves or other emitters are not gonna you know, mess up our airplane in some way. And then after that, uh, we start actually doing dynamic stuff, you know, taxiing and then eventually uh, first flight. Once ready to fly, the X-59 will be handed over to NASA, who will perform around nine months worth of flight tests to ensure the aircraft's performance and safety. Then, once this is complete, around late 2025, the X-59 will fly supersonic over NASA Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards Air Force Base in California. To prove the quiet supersonic technology works as designed, confirm aircraft performance in real atmospheric conditions, and demonstrate that the X-59 is safe to fly in national airspace. Finally, the third phase of flights between 2026 and 2028 will involve flying the X-59 over select U.S. cities and asking residents to share their opinion on the sound it produces. And so if that ends up successful, which we expect it will, uh, that'll get data to define a new speed limit instead of, you know, right now the speed limit uh, for commercial flight is uh, less than Mach 1. That's, that's just, you know, it's a speed speed limit. Whereas really it should be a noise speed limit if that's really what the objection was. With this new noise speed limit defined by U.S. and international regulators, the gates would be opened for new commercially developed quiet supersonic aircraft that could travel over both water and land, drastically reducing travel times for citizens across the world. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe to Futurology for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.